Just a community is a, is a violent community. Most of my guys have experienced violence in some way of shape or form. Here shot. We have to run. If we're on the front, we have to run. You have some police who I would consider them as rogue, rogue cop. Now, no more the research um, that we have done would indicate that young people do not trust the police. We have to get young people involved in this kind of project because young people are those who are most at risk. The gangs have put children through school, they will supply food, they will do all sorts of things. So in effect the gangs have been the government for a period of years. 2007 people were saying let's disband the Jamaican Constabulary Force and start again. Town, a product of Trench Town. Sunshine, come up here, son. You can't know what's going on. You say, I have to associate with the people. Them. You say, I have to you know what's going on. So he asked me, what I go on. I said, boy, I draw the thing that's nice. That means I'm going to tell you what don't nice. But I said, I'm going to change it to own. I said, I can change the community and get a better community. I don't know if I can get any justice out of injustice, but I'm trying my best. We have a new generation of youngsters that decided by themselves that enough is enough. We never really seen a real unity amongst people, so to say, especially the younger youth in you know, the community. If you have a subculture of violence, the answer is to, or the, the medicine for it must be to inject it with peace. No violence. No war, nothing. Everything is okay. We're breathing okay, and we want it to be like this for the people of this community and other communities too who are facing dangerous crime. In the, in the whole scheme of things, we understand that it is not them on us, but it is all of us. And therefore, we, we reach to our communities with that flag a flag and a, and a banner and a badge that says, I am a servant of yours. I am here to, to work with you to protect our community, to protect our country. We are now seeing where people, communities, organizations, civil society, state ministries, agents and departments are recognizing that community safety and security is not simply a police job, a police responsibility, but the, all of us have a responsibility. When you go into these communities and you set up programs, you know, you empower the citizens to know that they too have a part to play in the security of their community. And so the work becomes much easier because we're working together. The whole purpose of community policing was to transform the communities by helping the communities and the police force work together to develop partnerships, to identify and to address the causes of crime and disorder in the community. So we partner with the citizens, we ask them what are their major problems, what are the major problems they are facing within their community. And so they know how, how to address those problems better than we do because they're the ones living there. We've um, worked very closely to the community, community groups, in particular with the JCF uh, in terms of them harmonising and institutionalising community policing into their everyday practices. The Jamaica Constabulary Force has some very, very dynamic and really good uh, uh, trainers uh, on board. Uh, the problem is that they often have difficulty getting hold of materials, you know, it's, it's, it's a very costly, very costly thing. We're able to, to, to uh, in assist, uh, with assistance again, train several thousand officers, in fact, to, to date we have trained over 9,000 police officers in carrying out the activity of community-based policing. It's now institutionalised well and truly. This is uh, shown by the fact that they have some 800 neighbourhood watch groups engaged, which is in excess of uh, 15,000 people who are actively working with the police and some 90 youth clubs, which encompasses a similar number around about 15,000 active youth uh, working in the youth clubs. It's not just about police tactics and so on, it's about a systemic approach 
to how you change the relationships so that you can guarantee that the process of transformation can continue. There's not many countries where they have to investigate possibly 500 uh, police shootings a year. We're a paramilitary force, so most of the things that we do is really with force. We never got to the point where we were working with the people to resolve community issues. It was strictly law enforcement. Many communities did not trust the police and did not work well with us. So we had to promote an anti-corruption strategy as a key um, element of building the community policing um, strategy. The newspaper cuttings were talking about police officers going on the streets, unlawful killings, corrupt officials in the JCF, uh, and there was a real breakdown in public confidence. When we are trying to have a unity with the community people and with the police, you have some police who I would consider them as rogue, rogue cop. They are the individual who are trying to dismantle all type of unity. Police, because of the heavy gang influence uh, in every part of the Jamaica life, uh, the police became out of habit, extremely heavy handed might be one way to put it, over a period of time. There are an enormous amount, unacceptable amount of extrajudicial killings and they've continued right up until this time. My son was just into a yard cooking, right? And when he's in the yard cooking, a shootout took place five roads, five roads from where my son got killed. No question asked, no question asked, no shoot. And when he was in the house crying, when he was in the house crying, 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 they come back in the house and that, a, that is the time when they killed him. 17 years and two months old. And he was so brutally, brutally murdered by the police when that little boy is a little boy who didn't get arrested, no time. Never go to jail, no time. He even involved in the police, the police summer camp. Anti-corruption goes hand in hand with community policing. Uh, we've got buses badged around the town. One side it talks about community policing, the other side it talks about the 1800 corrupt number. Buses have these big billboards down the side now. Build safer communities with police officers smiling, holding the kids, doing the right things but also underneath, how do the police report when wrongdoing when they see it? In a confidential manner. And the 1800 corrupt line, again supported by the USA, is another thing that evidences to the public that we mean business. It's a number they can ring in, the phone is answered in England, it is not answered in Jamaica, and that is deliberate to give people a sense of confidence that they won't be informed on themselves, that it's going to a legitimate source, and that comes back here. They've seen a tremendous um, leap forward in terms of the efforts being made to deal with corruption. The results we're having, we're removing six, I mean, substantial numbers, well over 400 um, really bad people from the police force. We've been very visible and aggressive in this drive, so the public understands that we're actually doing something uh, decisive about it. There's a great phrase, you know, respect man in, in, in Jamaica, and uh, you've got to earn that respect. And I think when people see that you are working hard uh, to try and improve the quality of life, because that's my job, improve the quality of life in Jamaica, I think um, people see that the respect is there and they start to buy into what you're doing. People are starting to inform, whereas before people were too scared to inform. I think the term that the Jamaicans used, informer for dead, it means if you inform, you will be killed. There's no argument at all. Internally, I'm seeing where many, many police officers are happy about the steps that have been taken to rid the force of corrupt officers and to professionalize it because they are sensing renewed pride in their profession. We're seeing where the force is attracting now very, very bright capable, talented youngsters, many of whom might not have come if they didn't see us making this kind of visible effort. Look now, after 2007 when we started and we talked about people wanting to disband the JCF, that's what they were talking about. People aren't talking about disbanding the JCF now. People are talking about what a good job the JCF are doing. When we leave this country, they are 100% sustainable now in their ability to take forward community policing 
uh, and, and work with the whole of government. There's no doubt we've put all the systems, we've put all the policies, all the procedures, all the training packages, all of that's fully in place and being practiced as we sit here by the JCF. Comet is also uh, about, um, about how you replicate or scale up a pilot activity. We decided that instead of replicating a model, what we needed to do actually was find what the successful elements of that model were, combine them with other successful elements from other people's experiences, and together mainstream all of those good practices. Three years ago we were in 57 communities doing community-based policing. Now we are in almost 700 communities. They've touched on, I would suggest now, every community in the island. While they might not all have active neighbourhood watch or active youth clubs, but every day there's a new one starts up. We're trying to use this approach, um, not just to go in Hello? when something happens, but to actually go in before it happens. Now we have most of our commanding officers are really young police officers who came up in the force during the community-based policing era. So what you find now is that now that they are divisional commanders, they are able to drive the process from that very high level and that is making it much easier as we move forward. On a regional level, Jamaica now is seen as the icon for a community engagement and community policing. There's no doubt about that. And there's other evidence from other donors to say that they're now seeing what Jamaica is doing as world's best practice. One of the major threats for the United States in particular is it's its third border. They talk about three borders, Canada, Mexico and the Caribbean. And I think there needs to be a significant investment from international partners. With CID, I only recently held a conference in the, ba in, 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 in the Bahamas where we, we got a significant number of Caribbean practitioners together to look at the common challenges, look at the, pro the, the solutions that we can jointly come together and that was tremendously beneficial, sharing best practices with each other. The Caribbean Basin Security Initiative sees the success of the Jamaica model of anti-corruption and uh, community policing as a model that can be taken right across the Caribbean and successfully start to stabilise. I'm not for one moment going to suggest that without a lot of resources the changes couldn't be made because I have to promote this idea um, so that other societies that um, are operating within, within the same kind of resource constraint as Jamaica can understand that, look, if you put your mind to it, if you are committed to it, if you train people, if you are entrenching it in your policies and your procedures, and if you are holding people accountable for um, embracing this strategy and pursuing this strategy, you can make a difference. train people at the station level where each police station commander and their deputies were exposed to significant training in the concept and the philosophy of community-based policing. We're actually in Kingston Central Division. This is actually Gold Street, one of our early community-based policing program. This is a community that um, is relatively safe now because over the years they used to record high levels of crime and violence to include murders. And the past five years it has been trending down gradually, coming from as high as 100 per annum. Last year they had only three murders. And as the lowest number of crimes recorded since the start of the year of all the, 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 the divisions in Jamaica. We have a team of officers which is headed by the commanding officer who ensure that regardless of where the police officers are assigned, they take time out to engage a community on a one-on-one -on -one basis. When you, when you walk, when you walk, you, 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 you develop a, a personal relationship, a one-to-one -one relationship with the community when you walk. You get to meet the, the baby, the adult and all and sundry in the community. When you walk, you can stop. And if somebody wants to tell you something one away, they get the opportunity to do so when you, when you, when you do your walking. Because the walking speaks volume. You're not going to find everybody who is 100% with the police. But on a whole, it, is, it, it has been good so far. 
there were times when we couldn't sit on the sidewalk. We couldn't walk on the street because there were times when I had to reach a corner here, yeah, bam, bam, bam. But the police, the Gold Street Police, the Central Police, they are doing a lot. Great. I appreciate them a lot because we get 24 hours protection. So whilst you'll have persons will say we don't trust the police in general, but they were able to trust their committee policing officers. And the more we put constables and corporals and sergeants out there to work the field, to walk the beat with the community, the more they were able to identify with more police officers. So that started the change in the perception of how they view the police department and how they view law enforcement. Yes, this is one of the elder, you know, and this is my, this is one of the elder in the community. I'm a girl. Yes. Sarah, so man. Yes, um, my mother. She's no partial. She tell you how it is. You see, I mean, if you're wrong, she tell us that you're wrong. She not gonna love you. She not gonna love you. Yeah, man. You got. We don't know why. The partial. When we went to Southside and 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 we and we walked up to Tel Aviv, and there was this um, Rastafarian man that walked with us, and he grew up in the community and has been living in that community for over. 40 years. As a matter of fact, we saw him and when he went up, he bent down and he kissed the ground. And um, what he said was of, of significance to him because of the crime and violence that separate both communities, which is just a street away from each other, that's Southside and Tel Aviv. And he, he said that in the past 16 years, it was the first time he was going to the community, which is just a neighboring community. He said, had it not been for the police, I." I never thought I would be able to walk in this community alive. Parade Gardens comprised of two communities, Southside, which we visited, and now in the heart of the, um, the Tel Aviv community. As a matter of fact, the Tel Aviv community has been quiet for the past two, three years. And we must send a commendation for, the, for the, the, the citizens of this community. They will have all in the peace and we don't have any complaint as relates to shooting or murder within this community for the past three years. And thumbs up for the persons in Tel Aviv. Yeah, man, the community with the police them now, that change, I wouldn't mind it go further up. We don't have a hundred percent change. But at least we want to work towards to get a hundred or maybe hundred and more changes between the community people, both kids, straight to elderly people, with the police. We have um, been here in volatile times, I must say, thanks to the whole initiative of the police and their community safety branch that we enjoy significant peace now. The persons are seeing the police station as a space within their community that they need to visit just to interact with the police officers. That's huge. Part of the role of the police, especially under the current Commissioner Owen Ellington, was to start to rebuild the trust of the community in the police. And the only way he could do that was to start through proper community policing uh, practices, was to engage with the community, let the community start to become a part of solving the problems that were happening in society. Extremely high levels of crime, uh, in particular in recent years, as high as 1,500 people murdered each year. And for a population of just over two million people, that's uh, totally unacceptable. One time back here, and we used to like have uh, four or five murders a week, you know. More, yeah. more. Yeah, man, yeah. seven. Yeah, man, we used to talk about those yeah. 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 Can't sleep. The kids are just like this because we lose eight, eight person. He lose his four whole family. family. Yeah, four of his family. Three kids execution and a wife. Style. Execution style. Yeah. My name is Mr. Anthony Anderson. I'm from this community. Chedega Park and um, um, they killed eight people on the 13th of August 2010. My wife and my three kids, they, they, they killed them and um, I was going through a very, very hard time here to live, to sleep, to eat, to breathe. Pierre shot. We have to run. If we're up on the front, we have to gone. Yeah. They're over there playing football, because that is the football field where the whole community play. We have to, everybody have to jump fence and run. take away themselves. They, they, they provide a mobile here and it is so great for us, it is so good. From that time until now, no violence, no war, nothing. Everything is okay, we're breathing okay and we want it to be like this for the people of this community and other communities too who are facing 
dangerous crime. What he, he done a great job to us recently. He put the telephone number yeah. onto the mobile. So when anything wrong, all the citizens from here and joining district that's close by, this is the mobile they use. So if anything goes wrong, there's a number for the mobile. So we just call the number. You don't scare to talk to the police. No, no, first time, no, first time we used to. No, we want the police, we never confident them. But where are we confident the police? When the police can rap. Yeah. They do our do good policing. Policy. You know, we can talk to them and they can talk to us. We realized that one of the big issues that plagued the JCF and citizens was the whole issue of trust. So because you're passing on more information, citizens, you're police, so you're working with the, with the citizens, not because they commit crime, but because you're trying to make committees better, so you started breaking down this barrier. That place there is Gravel Heights. Yes. All the people run away. Yeah, and since Mr. Back. Castle put in thing in placement, so they're people coming, coming back, back, back now. Coming back. They're living there. Kids yeah. coming back to school. Yeah. yeah. So that was the home of the gangs where they used to operate from the clansman gang members used to operate up there and um, there was a series of murders um, houses were burnt they threw bottle bombs inside of some of the premises they chased away the people a horrific crime uh, happened in one of our areas where two uh, women were beheaded and a man was beheaded uh, in a gang related incident uh, and of course the police reacted very, very heavily and the community is saying in that article there, please don't let this spoil our relationship that, with the police that has been developed in recent times. A number of them have moved on, a number of them have met their demise at the hands of, of the police, a number of them have been arrested and as I said to you down at um, um, Raya Cobra Drive, Lariston. A number of those guys that were involved in the beheadings are behind bars. Number one priority for me. You walk the street and this is will readily tell you that they can't afford for criminals to take their community back because of the relationship they now enjoy with the community. There's one example out in Gravelites in Spanish Town where the policemen have to be working in very tough um, environment and they spent you know, very long hours in those areas. And the citizens actually came together and decided that they were going to construct toilet facilities for the policemen. And when I go into the communities, I'm asked, um, what are you doing to make the policemen comfortable? We want them to, to remain here. The term gravelites was just a lot of stones and trucks that people couldn't, could hardly traverse because of the terrain. Even the police had problems up there in, in foot patrolling. But what we have done now is we have actually started a roadway using our police trucks and one of the tractors that we have and um, the help of the citizens. You'll see work in progress when you go up there because they're doing a retaining wall now on the top of the hill to prevent what we have put on the grounds from washing away. They have reached pretty far in four days. This is four days work and so we are really proud of what is happening. These are the men that are coming. I'm in a command. I'm in a command. Any reports, anything? Nothing. nothing Since this project really started, we have more peace. Because what has happened since 2008, then we had peace in and out, in and out. But really, since this venture with SSP Castell, we have more peace, we have people coming back home. We have people seeking houses to buy and people seeking houses to rent. It is now our command post, our observation post. This is a real vantage point here and we can see as far as Quarry, Lake Spen, back to Riverley, around to Sligoville and right around Trial Heights, Keystone, Mount View, right back. We have to ensure that the hotspots are properly manned and that um, the teams are out, whether on foot patrol or mobile patrols. The post here is equipped with the cell phone, just like every one of the community members, community members here. Yeah. They have the numbers for this outpost, so they can call the policemen one-to-one -one here and um, whatever is happening in the community, we can know. So it's not necessarily, um, it's not necessary that they have to go through control here a control or Kingston control at all times. They can speak directly to the men here. Next part of my dream for up here is the internet cafe. A small 
doesn't have to be anything big. Maybe about 18 feet by maybe 20 feet. That the kids up here can have access to the internet so they can help to do whatever homework or whatever they have to do. Because without, without this sort of intervention, I don't see it probably coming just now. And I, I can't say it won't come. But we have to accelerate the rate at which it is done by identifying these problems and having the, the authorities then to assist us in, in bringing it or you know, causing, it, causing it to become a reality. I know this can only help to enhance the quality of life for the citizens of Gravelites who have suffered so much at the hands of criminal gunmen in this year. We will never go back to what it was before. One needs to be very, very keyed in with what's going on with youth. They are the, by far the largest portion of the population in Jamaica and in much of the Caribbean, and the most vulnerable to being influenced by outside forces that are very difficult for them to, uh, uh, to evaluate and to assess. Just a community, it's a, it a violent community from a first stage, and we want you know, the youth them to start look look at it as a different way, you know? Better men for everybody, better men for the youth in our community. We are seeing a, a, a shift in young people's interactions with the police. We are seeing an, in, an increase in the number of police youth clubs. We have seen an increase in the number of neighborhood watches. But we have, we have also seen a critical move by community-based organizations to work closer with the police to build the safety of their communities. The community meet at the station, so that really brings us a sort of partnership between citizens and the police. I've been in the police youth club for over 15 years, and I've been running those three police youth club for over 10 years. We never really seen a real unity amongst people, so to say, especially the younger youth um, in the community. So we really come with the idea and say, well, we want a youth club, we're really responsible for youth within the community so we can bring them together and know that we can have more opportunities for them and more change so they can see a different type of lifestyle and not just the everyday get up and just their year can come together and actually make things happen and you know, uplift the thing. I'm very proud of them. Because they could have been elsewhere, they could have been hanging in the gun. We don't really have any problem with these guys because I know my troublemakers. And you know, all of these guys are action ready to work, empowerment. They just need some help. You have a lot of fight in the school, you know. And you have a lot of weapon to collect at the school from the students. The Safe School program was also funded by USAID because within the schools we do have a lot of challenges with, challenges with youth violence gangs in schools. We, we were able to, to supply hundreds of students with something as basic as exercise books. Because we work with the schools, so you would have like students or younger persons in the community who would have a personal relationship with. The School Resource Officer Program is targeting not expelling youths from school, but diverting them to other educational sources so that they stay in the education system to get a better t chance at life later on. Well, we, we have a relationship with the dean and the, 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 the principal, especially to the vice principal, along with the students. Because the police now were getting the opportunity to know the community members, especially those youths, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, no longer um, the police were able to look at the community and said, all those young people are criminals. We were able to make the distinction between the good law-abiding youths in the community, those who really needed an opportunity to make something better of their lives than those who were outright criminals. Comet was great, gracious enough to have them and organize the Community Safety and Security Branch come back with a, with a team of young police officers trained in the art of speaking with young people. These young police officers were able to break down you know, some of the, the, the walls that, of fear that were there helping the young men to understand that they do have rights as citizens and it is also still incumbent on them to behave in a particular manner so as not to create any negative ripples even when they're being dealt with in an inappropriate manner. Well, Youth of the Future of Jamaica, it's not a lot different to most projects around the world. We, for example, would go into a community that a school needs to be 
to be fixed, a training centre where young people can go and, and, and learn a skill, uh, people can go and get them off the streets, get young boys into, into training programmes. That, that was something critical that on, without the assistance of USA they would have had a challenge with. Welcome to New Horizon. We're a Christian-based uh, technical training facility here and we reach out to mostly um, at-risk youth in the Spanish Town environment. We were set up by a, a Jamaican pastor who uh, had the vision, who ran a boys home for 30 odd years and realized that many of the youth were leaving just on the eve of their 18th birthday with practically nothing um, in terms of technical training. So he wanted a place where these youth could actually come, stay and get training. You know, you have approximately 50 guys per batch and these youth come from the wider diaspora, from St. Catherine, Spanish Town in particular. A lot of the guys that come from this area are coming from low income uh, backgrounds. They tend to come from low income areas as well. And um, most of my guys have experienced violence in some way of shape or form, whether through gangs, murders, or even being involved in gangs themselves. We assist by giving them remedial classes, one of which you can hear going on in the background here. What we're trying to do is now use this project to feed other funded projects. Use the guys here and their training and their expertise to build equipment that will actually help Jamaica. This, for example, is something that's needed by goat farmers in Jamaica right now. Right? So we are using the skills set of the guys plus the tools that we graciously receive by the American people to build equipment such as this is appropriate for the needs of um, Jamaicans. Right? Youth is where we should be going, I mean, and the, the, the kids in the schools and the youth, because I think in Jamaica there probably is a, a bit of a lost age group uh, because of the lack of education, the lack of uh, uh, transparency and accountability that's taken place in Jamaica, which is slowly now coming into place. And I think we've got to involve the youth in everything that we do. Town is where the first political homicide ever took place in Jamaica. Rose Town, and they call it the Battle of Rose Town, 1947, 3rd of October 1947. Two years ago, we couldn't have gone into Rose Town without a police escort, a full police escort. Now we can drive in in our own cars, no police escort, and people have got their arms open to you and want to talk to you. There's a will to change down there which is unbelievable. I think that's a reflection of the whole of Jamaican communities. We stand on a firm note, on a firm footnote that Rose Town is the community that's going to really transform Jamaica on a whole. There's a man that if you ever thought somebody was going to turn bitter on society, but he's taken it as a, a mind-bending practice to actually engage his other two sons in the police youth clubs, sends them to police camps and he gets heavily involved in the neighbourhood watch and all other community activities because he's saying while the police carried out this action there's a reason it's Jamaica's fault because we are so bad all that has to change. For me now, for me now, I don't know if I can get any justice out of injustice but I'm trying my best to see if I can get some justice out of injustice because the fate that faces my son I doesn't want other youth to face such dilemma. We want them on the computer. So that is how we want to see the transformation because that transformation is our inspiration for this community. Uh, Mr. Briggs, who runs the small uh, library there, uh, all of these, none of these people have a job. They just do it because they want to make their community a better place to live. My name is Calvin Lloyd Gibbs. I'm a member of the Rosestone Benevolent Society and also I'm in charge of the Rosestone Community Library. The library was a church run by my aunt named Clara because of the political situation people are even afraid to turn up to church. Having five or six computers is a great big help because what has happened, these people and children who attend the library, they don't have to leave out of their community which in fact sometimes they can't even find a bus fare to really attend the government library, which in the fact is at Crossroad. 
So it is just right here at the fingertips. And because of all of this, with people like the USAID, we have seen a big changes here. You know, we're setting up a library, which in fact, we are catering to about 100 or 150 children. The thing where I really find out is that most of these children, their parents are all young people. So most of the time they are left with the grandmothers to really take care of them. Since the library is not really a business that they make money, but to try our best to do what we can for them. Why haven't you left the community? <laughs> a lot of people have, you know, because of the difficult situations, a lot of people have left. You haven't. Why is that? I was just born up the road here. Yeah. Over the years, I just, just love the community. I haven't left and moved and gone nowhere else, which in fact plenty of other people do for certain reasons. I love the community, I love the people, and most of all, I love books. <laughs> this, is a, this is a real need for the community, you know, it's a real sun right now, is a void. If you're having a void now, there's no violence, but there is not much opportunity for the youth to utilise within this space of time. Sheldon, the man that's got Youth on the Go program down there, again a volunteer. Desperate for work, earns no money, but spends his time every day with young kids, keeping them off the streets and the street corners and away from the gangs. The old man is who, who, who you look, on, look up to within the community. I like some money I done and tell them I fire shot. And this is a, a, a kind of psychological thing where we want to change within the community. On Labor Day, that building right there on Labor Day, we want to start cleaning up from now. So on Labor Day, we really add some board to it. Now these youths, has not no opportunity to any any facility to access internet. Um, many, many of them are doing SBAs, some of them do um, no computer access. So you know we are in a technological world now, right? So creating creating a youth a youth centre such as this, right, would have would have a great benefit for the community. You know when children involved in certain projects it can manifest. Because when Parents of the children see that their children is going down by the south and see them return safe and sound and, and parents from the, the, the south see their children come by the north and see them come back safe and sound. That is how the transformation is taking their time in the pipeline and so. This is my hometown, this is my lane. My lane. Hello, my name is Odin Palmer and I'm from Rosetown, Kingston 13. This is my place and I'm in, sir. I'm just trying my life. Uh, rough right now. Sufferation, you know what I mean? I grew up in the community. I see people come and people go. I wish I could have a plan to change the young youth them. My future farm. I'm just turned 18 in October, so I'm just 18 now. So you can see my young youth said we, right? Yeah. Me alone can't change it, but make a step and the first step in the community. Because I first somebody have farm in a sunlight street, in a rose town. We don't have farm somewhere down, but this is an area at where I see, first I see somebody farming. I have tried to do something good in my area. When you say you like me, I try to do this because I alone start it. And I alone I help it. But I want to have some young youth who drop out of school and now I don't want to go. I now no more opportunity. I can come farm. Because this is my farm. This is my, my future plan. There's a lot of ups and downs, you know, ins and outs. But Right now, Rosetown is moving into the direction of, of real development. When I was here last year talking with Mr Allen, he made the statement that uh, in Rosetown, transformation was his inspiration. It was quite inspiring from my perspective, so we've had the signs made up and they're now hanging them proud, proudly around the area. Rosetown, <laughs> a product of trench towns. <laughs> yes, sir, Doug. Safety and security is, is not just the mandate of, of one ministry, it's really all of our responsibility. We are moving towards a whole of government approach and that I think is critical and that I think is a result in large ways of the investment that USAID has made in terms of its democracy and governance program 
more generally, but in terms of the work that Comet has been doing to ensure that we move towards a broader approach in dealing with peace and security and stability in this country. The cabinet also approved at the time the establishment of an interagency committee to oversee the implementation of the National Crime Prevention and Community Safety Strategy as well as the Community Renewal Program. The NCYD's mandate generally does not outrightly involve community safety and security. Um, however, the organizations work across the youth sector and the youth scape, as I like to speak to it as, has naturally allowed for work within this pivotal area. From, from all the agencies? piece now is to, to start instead of trying to deal with these issues themselves where perhaps we don't have the expertise is make the linkages, make the partnerships and involve the other people uh, and that will end up with the, the people of Jamaica getting a better quality of service from, from all the agencies. And the future approach is uh, we, uh, systematically we see it as more synergized working relationship with the community safety and security arm of the police you know. It's important that all the other ministries that make decisions that impact on human life and the quality of life, that they also understand the implications of those for security, for stability, and um, the production of crime. Many of our interest data from the hospital basically showing that many of the perpetrators as well as victims of violence are certainly youth. So that will therefore, you know, focus our attention on that particular age group. Police officers out there in the street, they're doing many different things which are not necessarily related to crime. They're doing lots of social work activities uh, and other activities which other agencies could possibly do better. We need social workers in schools, not as resource personnel outside of schools. We need them in schools. The Child Development Agency, they are now calling us to say, we didn't recognize that you were doing so much with young people who we are working with as well. So it really provided a platform that we're gonna see more collaboration with our stakeholders. If we start to get, and a major part of the project now has been aiming for the last 12 months, at the whole of government approach to community safety and security. That's getting every other government agency to start to understand what their role in community safety and security is. So I must say where good over evil is concerned, that good is dominating evil right now. From the era of management, the era of management we can say without a doubt that there's a new philosophy that's, that's driving the activities and the actions of the JCF. Police are we I work all right, we're not gonna fall to the police, we're not the police, I'm gonna the police, I'm good. Communities have changed, people have, have demonstrated that within them they had the capacity to do some things and had they not been, been given the opportunity that we were able to provide them with the benefit, with the assistance of the USAID, they would not have uh, been able to do that. Lower Rosetown and Upper Rosetown is like a family now. We see each other, we we'll communicate and that's where I want to put it. It's been a long time, no, no war, no violence, no crime, no that's raping, very good. nothing. Mm -hmm. So the breathing space coming much easier now for us. You know, the kids them, they, they, can, they can focus now, you know. The business has started to come back. Last year, 2011, Commissioner Ellington, you know, was awarded the Man of the Year. Now that's a transformation from 2007 to 2011. Now that's been done with a lot of hard work. I'm very happy that um, I'm a part of this. I'm very proud of the team that is making it happen. And I'm very, very um, grateful and USAID has provided tremendous support in resources, technical um, assistance, and um, guiding the process. Uh, so it made those institutions, it didn't, it didn't take away, it didn't detract from uh, the, the, the authority of those institutions or the roles of their, of, their, of their partners, it actually reinforced them. We can't lose ground now, because if we do, it's gonna be much more difficult to regain the territory we have already conquered. So our best bet is to keep moving forward, is to keep pressing ahead with these programs, is to keep searching for new programs that can excite the new generation. I think most, most of the investment that we have made is really in the minds, in the attitudes of our men and women to make them understand that this, the world is changing, we have to change, and the change we will make for Jamaica 
is to embrace the communities and work with the communities in partnership. And that is what I think has made the difference. I want to get to the point when it gets to the psyche of every Jamaican citizen that safety and security is a personal responsibility, that even the child on the street understand what it means to have a community that is free from crime and free from the fear of crime, and how, as a nation, the bigger goals and the larger benefits to be derived if we all made that a personal, personal commitment. We are one people. I'll just leave with a few words if, I, if I'm permitted. Come let us unity in our safety and security for surety. Surety for our children, women and big men. We want safety from rural to UN then. More fluent then. Yeah man, safer environments, better health, we could create wealth. We want to feel safe in our community, for surety. We want to feel safe in our community. We want to walk free without disunity, for surety. Blessed love.